Hi guys, it's Mr. Pollock Biology here for a video on meiosis for AS Level Unit 2. Here's our objectives for this quick video. You're going to understand why meiosis is necessary. You're going to describe the stages of meiosis and you're going to explain how independent assortment of chromosomes or independent segregation of chromosomes and crossing over contribute to variety. So let's get started by looking at the key differences between mitosis and meiosis. Now for most of you guys this should be a recap of GCSE Unit 2? Yeah, Unit 2, um, which basically compares the two in, in a simplistic amount of detail. They are both forms of cell division, each, uh, each involved with producing different types of cells. Mitosis generally replaces body cells and allows us to grow and repair and replace the old cells, uh, whereas meiosis is involved in producing the gamete cells or the sex cells. So I like to compare these by looking at a couple of key features. The number of copying stages, where the genetic material um, is replicated. The number of division stages, where it's split. The number of nuclei, or cells, that are produced and the genetics of those nuclei. So in mitosis, we've got one copying stage and one division stage, and we get two identical daughter cells as a, as a, as a result. So we get two nuclei, and the genetics are diploid, which means they contain the full number of chromosomes. Um, interestingly, we, we, we talk about diploid and haploid rather than half and full. So diploid is the, the, full, the full amount that you should have um, in your adult state. Uh, now meiosis is completely different. There's still one copying stage but there are two division stages um, and as a result we instead of getting two uh, nuclei produced we get four and because we've divided twice and only copied once um, the genetics of that cell are going to be haploid. They contain half the genetic material. So let's have a little look at the importance of meiosis. Um, why is it important? Well, it maintains the chromosome number, the full diploid chromosome number, when gametes fuse. Gametes are haploid, um, and therefore when they fuse together, they would be they form a, a diploid uh, organism. If you didn't have haploid gametes, your chromosome number would double every time, you, every generation an organism reproduced, and that's just generally a bit useless. Um, the other great thing about meiosis is, is it produces an absolutely huge amount of variety and variation in the offspring, as beautifully represented by these bunnies. So let's get into the sciencey bit, the actual stages of meiosis, um, and I'm going to try and illustrate this as graphically as I can. But first of all, we should look at the different parts. First of all, the homologous chromosomes pair up. You might get some crossing over. Um, and then the homologous chromosomes are going to separate into new cells. This is meiosis 1, or metaphase 1. The second part involves chromatids moving apart from one another, and the haploid nuclei being formed in further new cells. And this is meiosis 2, or metaphase 2. So meiosis 1 is the first division, meiosis 2 is the second division. So let's look at this in a, a, a beautiful graphic representation. Hey, look! A nucleus, or a nucleus, or a nuclei, no, nucleus, nucleus, one. So, uh, here's, here's our nucleus, um, and let's throw some chromosomes in there. Uh, here's one from dad, the paternal chromosome, and here's one from mum, the maternal chromosome. We're only going to do this with one chromosome each, okay? Um, these chromosomes are homologous. Um, and basically that means they determine the same genetic characteristics, but they don't necessarily have the same alleles. So th on these chromosomes you might find blood group, eye colour, hair colour, but not necessarily the same forms of those genes. Okay? They will be at the same locations, the same loci on the, on the, chromos on the chromosomes, um, but not the, same, uh, not the same types of genes. So stage one. Our homologous chromosomes, they are going to pair up. They're going to line up beautifully. Um, the next stage depends. You may or may not get this occurring. Um, basically, when they line up, the chromatids, they, they sort of intertwine. Um, they wrap around each other many, 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 many times. And this is called crossing over. Now, what might happen is um, some, of the, some of the parts of those chromatids, um, they may break off and they may get exchanged, and that forms these things called recombinant uh, chromatids. 
So here we've got a little bit of the chromatid from mum and a little bit of the chromatid from dad have switched places. Now normally they switch at homologous locations, which means you just get directly swapping over of the alleles, uh, which is quite interesting and further contributes to variety. But in the last part of meiosis 1, the homologous chromosomes are going to separate into new cells or new nuclei. From this point onwards, um, we're done with meiosis 1, the first division, and we move into meiosis 2, the second stage of division. So the next little stage is the chromatids themselves. They move apart from one another. So we no longer have the, the, two, the chromosomes. We have the chromatids, the separate strands. And then finally, the final stage of meiosis 2, we get the nuclei formed, where these chromatids uh, form into new nuclei. And there we have it, four haploid nuclei, four nuclei with half the genetic material of the original cell that they came from. Um, and also, we've got a huge amount of variety here as well, which is brilliant. So, the causes of variation. Well, the one we talked about in the most detail there uh, was crossing over, which produces new recombinant chromatids with new combinations of alleles on each chromatid. Um, the second bit that we didn't really discuss was the way chromosomes line up to begin with, randomly, um, basically defines which chromosomes get pulled into which cells at meiosis 1. So we get a random combination of chromosomes in meiosis 1 or metaphase 1. Now, this is difficult to explain. The best way I can do it is by showing you a diagram that I pinched off Google Images. So here we go. Basically, the diagram shows two possibilities um, and the gametes that would be produced. No crossing over in this case, just, just independent assortment or independent segregation. Um, and it all depends on which way the chromosomes line up to begin with. So in possibility one, we've got two blue chromosomes on the left, a big one and a little one, and two red ones on the right, uh, a big one and a little one again. And in this case, we only get blue chromatids together and red chromatids together at the bottom. However, on the right-hand side, those two, um, the two smaller pairs, sorry, the two smaller chromosomes, they've switched places. Um, and this means we get a new combination uh, of daughter cells at the very end. So we have a blue and a red chromatid in each offspring. So just the way they line up determines which chromosomes get pulled into uh, the separate cells um, after the first division, and therefore that mixes things up for the final division. So um, let's summarize this whole thing. Um, most basically, the base, best way to remember this is that meiosis involves two division stages to produce four haploid nuclei. And this produces massive amounts of variation because crossing over an independent assortment or independent segregation of chromosomes occurs. That's it. Um, please don't get too stressed out about meiosis. Just learn the stages um, and everything will be absolutely fine. Thank you very much for watching. Um, please like, comment and subscribe.